One of these men is creating the largest monument the world has ever known. What is your name, please? My name is Korzak Zilkowski. My name is Korzak Zilkowski. My name is Korzak Zilkowski. Only one of these men is the real Korzak Zilkowski. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Dina Merrill, Donna Amici, and Kitty Carlisle on to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Dristan Decongestant Tablets, the new three-layer tablet for effective relief from cold miseries, sinus congestion, and pollen allergies. Dristan. Panel, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Please open your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time tonight, and follow along as I read this first one. I, Korzak Zilkowski, am a sculptor. I am currently engaged in the lifetime project of creating a suitable monument to the American Indian. I acquired the mining rights to a 6,000-foot mountain in South Dakota, named it Mount Thunderhead, and in 1948 started to carve into its face a mounted figure of Crazy Horse, famous chief of the Sioux Indians. When I have blasted and carved away some six million tons of rock, my monument will be the largest the world has ever known. Its outstretched arm alone can accommodate 4,000 standing men. It'll be taller than the Washington Monument, longer than the Mount Rushmore Memorial, and bigger than any of the pyramids of ancient Egypt. Signed, Korzak Zilkowski. Well, you heard these three gentlemen each claim to be Korzak Zilkowski, a sculptor quite extraordinary, I think you would say. And we'll start this round of questioning tonight with Don Amici. Don? Thank you, uh, Bud. Number one, uh, where did you uh, study sculpturing? I uh, took it up as a hobby, sir. N no I formal did. education? No, Number no, two? no. Uh, I studied in Chicago and New York both. Number three, where did you study? I never had any lessons. <laughs> uh, number uh, uh, one, who would you consider the greatest sculptor in, uh, in all history? Uh, Michelangelo is one. I consider him the best. You consider him the best? Do you know of another uh, uh, top Italian sculptor, number two? Uh, well, it, uh, my, my favorite sculptor does, happens to be an American, as a matter of fact. And his name is Charles M. Russell. Ch Charles Russell, a sculptor? Yeah. Uh, number uh, uh, three, uh, who, who do you think is the finest sculptor in the world? Today? The, wor the world has ever known. Oh, Phidias. I beg your pardon? Phidias. Kitty. Number one, what was Michelangelo's real name? Michelangelo. Number two? I have no idea. Number three? Michelangelo. His real name? Oh, all right. Uh, number one, would you be kind enough to spell your name? <laughs> J-U-N-I-O-R. Huh? <laughs> Junior. Junior? Oh, is that what you spelled? I see. Number two, uh, well, never mind. I see they're not going to spell their name, so that's that. Uh, number two, can you tell me how you, did you acquire this mountain from the state of South Dakota, or did you have buy it from uh, private people? Uh, no, I acquired uh, uh, mining rights to it from the United States government. Number three, can you tell me, uh, it's an awfully personal question, but this, this must cost a fortune. Where is all the money coming from to blast the rock and bring the dynamite and, and so forth? All the tourists come into my house, where I have a art gallery, sculpture. I see. Thank Stop. you. Oh, thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, maybe you know the name of the tribe that uh, ended a rather tragic uh, flight in the Dakotas. Do you happen to remember that? In the Dakotas? The end of the... You're not uh, thinking of Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce, are you? No, let me check with number two. Do you no, know? No. No, number one, do you happen to remember that? Uh, number three, what is the uh, a material of a blasting cap? I don't know. Do you, are you familiar with blasting two, number two? Well, uh, actually, you, you, are you speaking of the compound in the cap? Yes. Well, it uh, uh, usually is uh, fulminated mercury, the, the, the customary one. Is Although there... They, they do Sorry. use... Uh, I'm, I'm through, number Dina. two, thank you. 
Uh, number three, who, who is paying for this? Is this on a grant or is it well, just... Well, the tourists come into my home and they pay 75 cents for the permission to come in. And with that money, I use that to buy the steel and the bits and the powder and labor for the mountain. How long have you been saving up to do this? Well, I've been working at the whole idea for about 22 years, but actually out there since 1948. Number two, did you make a sketch of, of the sculpture before you started the blasting? Uh, no, I made a model. A model? That a was a picture model? of the model that you saw. I see. And uh, do you, do you uh, map it out and, and cross sections? Draft no, all the, uh, uh, the way we laid it out uh, was by, by projection. We made an outline on the mountain in white paint of the... Uh, We'll have to terminate that outline, white paint or no, there it is. It's time now to vote. If you will, panel, do as you always do, namely without consultation, mark your ballots and vote right now for number one, number two, or number three. As usual, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody still in a big study? Tom is in a big study. You somebody might? told me. Are you ready, Tom? Somebody, somebody told me. No, bud. Come on. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I voted for number one because it was between him or two or three. <laughs> <laughs> Dina, your vote, please. I voted for number three, bud. Because number three looks to me uh, uh, rather like a mountaineer and someone who might have uh, a hobby of, of the study of Indians and this kind of thing. Huh? Don, what about your vote? Well, I've got a silly reason. I guess uh, uh, he's the only one that pronounced Michelangelo, which is the way to pronounce the name, is against Michelangelo, which the other two, well, they pronounce it that, so I don't know. That's my reason. <laughs> Kitty, your vote. I voted for number three. I think that Michelangelo's real name was Buonarroti. But number one um, looks too effete to be doing this kind of a great big thing. He looks too civilized. Number two has... <laughs> number two has no color at all in his face. And number three looks like the kind of man who would be a tourist attraction, <laughs> as well as a great sculptor. And I like what he said about Phidias. <laughs> okay, there we have the votes all tallied. We know how we stand. At least we will know how we stand as soon as we find out which one of these three stalwart gentlemen is the real uh, sculptor on a large scale. So will the real Korzak Zolkowski please stand up. Funny. It was like the panel was wired that time. I never heard that happen before. As each one started to stand, the other, then the other one did. Everyone that went, ah, oh, 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 ah. <laughs> like just playing an organ over there. All right, number uh, one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is George Kastner. I own and operate the White Stallion Ranch in Hillsdale, New York. <laughs> Accounts of that good outdoor color you have, sir. And number two, your real name and what you do, please. Uh, my name is Pete Coolhoff, and I'm the gun and hunting editor of Argosy Magazine, and I just got back from Africa, and I do have a tan. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you all. It's been fun having you with us, and in checking up the score, we find the panel did rather well. They had three right and only one incorrect for a sum total of $150 from Tristan, as well as a package of fine gift pro products from the bake makers of Tristan. We thank you, gentlemen, again, and much success in your project. Sir. Good night and good luck. Now, panel, may I present our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Nancy Love. My name is Nancy Lowe. My name is Nancy Lowe. Follow along once again, panel. Look at the affidavit, if you will, your copies at least. I, Nancy Lowe, am employed by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. I work for the space task group known as Project Mercury. Since April of 1959, I have been secretary to the seven astronauts, including Commander Alan B. Shepard. Signed, Nancy Lowe. Three 
pretty ladies this time. Panel, each one claiming to be Nancy Lowe, secretary to our space astronauts, and we will start this cross-examination with Dina Merrill. Dina? Uh, number one, what is the name of the chairman of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration? Dr. Webb. Number two, do you agree with that? Yes. Number three? Yes, I do. Uh, number three, what are the names of the seven astronauts? Uh, we have Shepard, Carpenter, Sherrar, Glenn, Cooper. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm very nervous. Uh, number two, can you continue with that? Yes, Slayton and uh, uh, Slayton. Could I start at the beginning? Yes, you may. <laughs> Uh, Slayton, Grissom, and um, Shepard, Cooper, uh, Carpenter, Sherrard, and uh... <laughs> where did it go? Maybe Number one, can you fill in? <laughs> Number what? Who Carpenter, did they miss? Cooper, Glenn, Grissom, Sherrard, Shepard, and Slayton. <laughs> Very good, number one. <laughs> uh, Donna Thank you, bud. Number one, what were the requisites, uh, special requisites required in, in the, having these men been uh, chosen for the uh, space program? Um, they had to be a certain age. No, I, I'm not talking about things like that. I'm talking about special requisites uh, uh, in their makeup. Would you know? I'm sorry, I don't understand. You would, uh, uh, number two, do you have any idea what I'm... They have to have the equivalency of a, a degree in engineering. Is that what you wanted? No, to I wanted to know what, in the makeup of the individuals, whether or not they should be, you know, whether or not they, uh, how they tested uh, uh, for calmness and uh, 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 resistance to stress and things like that. I, uh, you wouldn't have any idea about these things. Number three? Well, um, as you know, they're all family now, and this has something to do with their stability. Yes. Uh, number... That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kitty? Number one, what is the Fédération Internationale Aéronautique? Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, number two, do you know who Dr. James P. Hogan is? No. Number three, what did they eat before they... B b what did uh, Commander Shepard eat before eat. he took off? Well, he had steak, eggs, toast, no coffee. Number one, can you tell me the name of the nurse who took care of him? Lieutenant D. O'Hara. Number three, um, can you tell me what the name of that escape hatch was called, which we all watched on television with such interest, which was the last remaining thing to be taken away? Number two, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Number three, do you know what it was called? The umbilical cord, is that what you're talking about? This is what they call it, the last. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looked like that, but that wasn't... Well. <laughs> That's what it's Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, what does A-OK -okay mean? Everything's OK. And what's the A for? It's just um, a short term. Like keep listening or something? Uh, number two, how many astronauts are married? All are married. All are married. Number three, is there a lady astronaut? A lady astronaut? Not, no. not, not under your charge, but is there one, number one? That's all we have time for, so let's get our feet back on the ground from outer space, grab hold of pencils and paper, and mark our ballot. Do so, as always, without consultation, and vote for number one, number two, or number three. All set, everybody? Did so well on the first one. You ought to be real good on this Tom, are you set? Which one do you think is the real one this time? I voted for number one. I'm a little stubborn, and there wasn't one last time, and maybe it'll be one this time. I like to be right about these things, and if you want to fool me again, don't have it be number one for the third time. <laughs> Dina, your vote, please. Well, I voted for number two. Um, I, I think that in order to, to take charge of, of seven such characters, one should be a motherly soul, and I think number two is. <laughs> <laughs> Don Amici, your vote, please. I rather suspicion that uh, my mind must have been tuned exactly to uh, uh, Tom's, because uh, my, <laughs> my reasons were exactly the same as Tom's, other than that I didn't vote for number one last time. 
Kitty. Well, I voted for number one. It seems to me that, that she was the only one who got all seven of them reeled off at one crack. The others hesitated and forgot one or the other. And I think that the escape hatch was called a cherry picker. Okay, they, I like umbilical cord better somehow. I don't know. <laughs> all right, the votes are in, the minds are made up, and we'll check it off right now and find out how much veracity there is in the way our panel has voted as we learn which one of these ladies is the real secretary to the astronauts. So will the real Nancy Lowe please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. I think I would have voted for her because she's the calmest of the lot. She's the most like the astronauts themselves. She's real calm. What I liked about the way she reeled off those names was she's the only one of the three of you who started alphabetically. And that's what uh, kept it in order in her mind. You did them alphabetically, didn't you? And that, of course, would have kept you from being confused, probably. But if you had fun, that's the important thing. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? I'm a kindergarten teacher in the Cambridge School, South Brunswick Township, New Jersey. <laughs> You have to worry about enough astronauts over there, don't you? Um, number three, your real name and what you really do, please. My name is Rose Marion Turner. I work for Chemical Bank, New York Trust Company, and I'm a bank teller. <laughs> be a real pleasure to put money in or take it out, where you're concerned, I must say. Well, let's check the score, and we find again the panel's been real smart. Three right and only one wrong. That means, of course, $150 from Dristan, ladies, but if you had fun, as I said before, that's the important thing. Also from Dristan, a package of fine products. Thank you for being with us. Good night. God bless you. One more team of challenges panel, and here they are. What is your name, please? My name is Martin Levine. My name is Martin Levine. My name is Martin Levine. Again, follow along, panel, if you will, with this affidavit. I, Martin Levine, am vice president of a baking company. Under my supervision, 20 of our bakers recently completed a most unusual birthday cake. It weighed well over two tons and was served to 6,000 guests at President Kennedy's official birthday party. For those interested homemakers with pencil and paper handy, here is the recipe for the president's birthday cake. Cream 400 pounds of butter and 400 pounds of shortening until soft. Beat in 800 pounds of sugar gradually. Add 500 dozen eggs, then beat well. Sift 800 pounds of flour three times and add baking powder and salt. Add the mixture, the flour, and five gallons of apricot brandy alternately to the egg mixture. Add 300 pounds of apricot jam. Add lemon juice and vanilla to taste and bake in a moderate oven. For the frosting, plan on an additional 400 pounds of shortening and 800 pounds of sugar. Signed, Martin Levine. Well, panel, you have been tasting some of President Kennedy's birthday cake, and that may help you in your questioning. Let's see if it does. So we find out, or try to, which one of these gentlemen is not the right one, all having claimed to be Martin Levine. So, we'll start with Tom Poston, mouthful and all. Thank you. Good luck, Jack. <laughs> Over there, talking for us all. That's here, pretty here. good. I think that's very good cake. Number three, how was this cake transported, may I ask? It was transported by armored car. Armored car. Number two, there's a question I'm very interested in. How many actual pieces of baked goods made up the cake? Baked goods are 16 sections of 25 pieces for a total of 400 all told. Thank you. Dina. Number three, is your baking company in Washington or New York? No, it's in Medford, Massachusetts. Oh, I was looking. No. Bedford, where? Medford, Massachusetts. And it went by armored car all the way down to Washington? That's right. Good heavens. Number one, was it a, a refrigerated armored car? No, it's not necessary. Number two, when is President Kennedy's birthday? The uh, 29th of May. Uh, number number three, it it uh, it didn't melt and it was hot in May no, in Washington. Not. Nothing perishable there at all. Don, thank you, bud. Number two, where are you from? I'm from 
Where was I born or where am no, I from? Where's now? the company? The company the company is now located in Denville, New Jersey, on then fifty three. Uh, now number one, where's your company located? Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut. Number th uh, three, what are the color of your license plates? Um <laughs> <laughs> Number, uh, number two, what are the color of your license plates? It's black numerals on a sort of a uh, tannish background. And number one, what are the color of your... Blue and white. Blue, wh which blue combi and white. What combination? Well, the white letters, the blue background. Kitty. You I'll talk to your mouth full. <laughs> you mean to tell me this is the real cake, the number one, that, that you... Part of the real cake? That's correct. And it stays as good as this till now? Well, we froze some of it. It's absolutely marvelous. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what do you call a moderate oven in terms of... Moderate degrees? oven, uh, approximately 350 degrees, give or take a few degrees. Number three, what do you call soft goods in the baking business? Soft goods in the baking business are flashing bells and clicking lights and things like that. So here we go now. Munch along in your cake, but find time, if you will, please, to mark your ballot. Without consultation, once more, will you vote for baker number one, baker number two, or baker number three? You don't have to do it in icing, just with the usual crayon. <laughs> well, we're getting a composition from Thomas. Tom? Aunt Jemima. <laughs> I was so busy with that, I didn't even vote. I voted for number one. Well, that's right, he was right the last time. What a goof I did. <laughs> okay, I'll have a reason. Uh, he knew his license plate color. Is that a silly reason? But it's a reason, at least. And uh, I thought he seemed uh, very much like a man proud of his work when Kitty said the cake was delicious, and he said, naturally. Dina, which one did you... Uh, I voted select? for number two, bud, because he... Uh, primarily because he, he knew what a moderate oven was, and I, I don't think executives, unless they cook, would know that. Probably not. Don? I voted for number two, uh... uh... Bud, I ruled out number three because he didn't know the color of Massachusetts license plates, and then I guess I just guessed between the other two. <laughs> and finally, Kitty. I, wrote, I, I voted for number two because he reeled off the amount of, of, of goods that you mentioned, you know, the different pieces that went into the cake marvelously. And also, uh, what was the other question? Well, anyway, I voted... Oh. The, the oven, that's right, the oven. And I voted for number two. Okay, there we have it. Interesting tonight that it's been three and one, right straight down the line. Let's see how it works out this time. Because the uh, votes are all in, and this is our moment of truth as we discover how right or wrong we may be. In learning, of course, the identity of the real baker of the president's birthday cake. So, will the real Martin Levine please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to you, Thank sir. You. I'm Thank sorry you. I was the only one that was left out of the party. I didn't get a piece of the cake, but I'm yeah. sure from the looks... Oh, hey. Kitty's giving you a Thank you very Thank much, you. Kitty. Mm -hmm. I'm not on a diet. She is. Oh. <laughs> In any event, this time, Tom, you were right. You stayed with the one, and it was, uh... It was lucky I didn't go off half-baked. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Number two, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Daniel Candell. I'm with the Business Affairs Department of Glitz and Tom Productions, the producers of this show. <laughs> and uh, number three, forgive me, my mouth is full. Sorry. Your real name and what you my do? My name is Jack Walter. I'm from Westbury, Long Island, and I'm an orchestra leader. Well, that is good, I must say. Let's check up on the score. I hate to come away from the cake long enough, but this time there were uh, three incorrect. That made you the really winning group here tonight, because three at uh, 250 each makes a total of $750 from Dristan, as well as, of course, a package of fine products from the makers of Dristan. We thank you for being with us. Thank you for the cake. Good night, and God bless you. I'm sorry to say that's all the cake we have time for tonight, pal. <laughs> So, it's been fun. We've all gained a little. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> and our tastes have been improved. I'm sorry you're on a diet, but good night, panel. <laughs> good night, Bud. Good night, Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Tristan and reminding you to, excuse me, tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Truth has been brought to you tonight by Bicidol Powder to settle acid upset stomach and relieve acid indigestion. Johnny Olson saying good night from To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.